My name is Gregory Morrissey. I am the senior pastor of the Plymouth Church in Framingham, Massachusetts. We are an open and affirming congregation in the United Church of Christ. Welcome. This month, we are reading Confessing Our Faith by Roger L. Shin, an interpretation of the statement of faith of the United Church of Christ. This is part two. Uh, to watch part one, click on the link below in this video. There's no way I can go line by line through the statement of faith. This book has basically already done that, and remarkably well. And my highlights and my underlines are likely going to be different from yours. So instead of each section uh, telling you what is in there, I'm going to ask you some questions. As we go through each section, you may notice several pairings. Life and death, prophets and apostles, sin and death, cost and joy, passion and victory, forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace, trial and rejoicing. I would encourage you to remember that these are not opposites or, or the alphas and omegas of, of some list. They are poles on which to hang a clothesline. They matter, and without them, we would just have a pile of wet laundry on the grass. <laughs> but there is space between them and around them, and that's their real purpose. They are meant to invite us into a deeper, more expansive wondering and imagination. Each line of this statement of faith is full and can be studied and explored and expanded. And each line can be understood in a new way, in a new season. That's why we read it. That's why we study it. That's why we come back to it over and over again. So let's dive in. We believe in you, O God, eternal spirit, God of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and our God, and to your deeds we testify. Our faith is our own, and yet the statement of faith begins in the plural. We do not do this faith belief thing on our own. Every week, even when we disagree with the sermon or, or, or struggle with the gospel's demand, we pray our Father, or our Creator. How do you feel about sharing your faith, about putting your private beliefs into a more open and public conversation? This statement urges us to testify, to tell our story alongside God's story. You call the worlds into being. Create persons in your own image and set before each one the ways of life and death. God isn't done. God rested on the seventh day, but got up on the eighth to begin again. Have you ever started something and then got distracted? That's okay. Take a breath, get back to it. To choose life is not a one-time decision, but a daily decision, hourly, moment by moment. When are you, how are you, are you choosing life? You seek in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. You judge people and nations by your righteous will, declared through the prophets and apostles. God's judgment is real, and it's not retribution. It's love. It's not a sending away, it's a bringing in. Who do you condemn? God does not condemn you when you mess up, either spectacularly big or drift just a little. If God sent the prophets to call us back in, to love us into wholeness, how might we pick up that work today? In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Savior, you have come to us and shared our common lot, conquering sin and death and reconciling the world to yourself. We say, in the fullness of time, God came to live among us. 
To say us is a bit of a generous stretch, given that we didn't live in the first third of the first century. And yet, if God came to them then, doesn't that say something about God's desire to be with us now? How are you making space, setting aside a room for God to be born? You bestow upon us your Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the church of Jesus Christ, binding in covenant faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. For all our effort and anxiety about this church, about how our church will bounce back after a pandemic, after whatever, we would be wise to remember that the church of Jesus Christ is eternal. It is forever. We are the church. When we allow ourselves to be bound in love and in service to our neighbors. So, who is the neighbor you don't know? Who is the neighbor you haven't invited? You call us into your church to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, to be your servants in the service of others, to proclaim the gospel to all the world, and to resist the powers of evil. We come to the church in need. When our faith is shaken, when our hope is blurry, when our connections are spotty. And here we are welcomed, healed, loved, and put to work. What is the ministry you are called to? What is your service? What is the language of your proclamation and the method of your resistance? You call us into your church to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table, to join him in his passion and victory. Jesus was baptized by John and immediately sent into the wilderness. Before the crucifixion and after the resurrection, the disciples were given bread and a commandment to remember. How willing are you to join Jesus in his passion, in his suffering. And for what victory might you actually consider it? You promise to all who trust you forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace, courage in the struggle for justice and peace, your presence in trial and rejoicing, and eternal life in your realm which has no end. We do not labor alone. All who trust in God will be resourced and accompanied. But, but trust not just in the sense of allegiance. How might you and your trust grow into something more than just belief? Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto you. Amen. I hope that was helpful for you as you step into this statement of faith, not just to understand it with your head, but also to embrace it with your heart. A reminder, we will gather on Zoom on Wednesday, August 24th at 7 p.m. Contact me for the link. The peace of Christ be with you.